Having a programming track is essential for DCC locomotives, and being able to take it with you wherever it's needed is even better. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're going to make a portable DCC programming track. This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without them, and if you'd like to join the Patreon community, you can follow the link in the description below and join for as little as $1 a month. For those of you that don't know, a programming track is something that is used to program DCC locomotives. These are typically connected separately from your main line and they typically cannot run a train. You will not be able to operate your locomotive on it. You'll only be able to read and write the CVs that control how the train operates. The program track we're going to build today is designed to be plugged into your computer and use the free program JMRI to write and read your decoder. Here's a complete list of all the parts you're going to need to complete this project. Now, obviously you're going to use different track for different scales and it's pretty much whatever piece of track you have lying around. I had a piece of Kato Unitrack lying around. You'll also want a hot glue gun of some kind. I'm using this Ryobi one right here, but any hot glue gun will work. We're going to start off by gluing our track in place. And for that, I'm going to use a little bit of super glue and we're just going to put it right here on its mounting points. If you're using just a regular piece of set track or an extra piece of flex track, you can just put the glue directly on the ties and then put it down. This is extra thick viscosity super glue. Notice that I'm mounting this off center so that I have enough space to mount my Arduino. Now I'm going to take a, another uh, joiner. you can use any type of rail joiner right here, and connect it to the side where the Arduino is going to be. This is going to make it easier to mount wires. Now it's time to put our Arduino Uno on the board. And for this I'm going to use hot glue. Hot glue is a great way for attaching electronics in a permanent fashion so that you don't have to worry about anything shorting out or anything because hot glue is also a great insulator. Next, we're going to use some Arduino prototyping wires with DuPont connectors, specifically male DuPont connectors, and we're gonna slide them in the rail joiners. I like using these over traditional wires because they're really easy to make sure that they're attached, and I'm going to use some hot glue right here just to hold them in place. You can also take wires and solder them in place as well. It's really your preference. This worked great for me. Now it's time to attach the motor shoe and you wanna make sure those pins are aligned. And I'm going to be doing this as a DCC++ EX base station. And if you wanna watch that entire video, I'll have it linked at the end of this video. The first thing that I need to do is I need to connect what's going to power the track itself, which is going to end up being a 12 volt power supply. And I just need to connect that to the two pins all the way on the right side of this six connector terminal right here. One's a ground and one's a VIN. And then I'm going to connect them to this DC barrel plug adapter. And then I'm going to glue this in place. And this is going to be where our power plugs in. Now it's time to connect our feeder wires from the track to the base station. And we're going to be connecting them to the B terminal. The A terminal is used for connecting to your main line that you would actually control your trains on. The B terminal on a DCC++ EX base station is for the programming track. And it doesn't matter which one goes where, you just need to have one wire going to one rail, one wire going to the other rail out of that B terminal. And now we can connect our USB to the Arduino Uno and our power, and then connect this to our our computer to do some programming. Now we're going to be installing DCC++ EX and they've made this extremely simple. You just go to their website, you go to their downloads and then command station downloads and then you'll go and download their automated installer. You don't even have to have the Arduino IDE anymore for this. They have made this great little automated installer that works fantastically well. Once you've downloaded it, you'll need to extract everything out of the zip file, which is just by right clicking and clicking extract. And then you'll have a folder with a bunch of files. You'll need to scroll down to the one called EX installer. This is the simple automated program that they have created to be able to install this on an Arduino. 
Next up, you're going to have the program open up and it's going to run through a few startup procedures and you want to make sure that your Arduino is plugged in at this point. And then it may run through some firewall issues with your computer. You'll just need to tell your computer that it's okay to run this program. And once that is all started up, you'll need to go in and first of all, select your COM port. I know mine's COM3 with the Arduino Uno hooked up. I need to select the board type, which is Uno, my motor shield type, which is Arduino motor shield. And then it's going to need to be set to base station type of command station EX. And you click compile and install. It's going to run through the entire process. This is essentially doing almost exactly what you would see in an Arduino IDE. They've just automated the entire process for you and it makes everything extremely easy. We're going to use JMRI to control our programmer. This is free software that you can use as a computer interface for your model railroad. And you'll need to scroll down to downloadable releases. I have a link to JMRI in the description below. Go ahead and click that. And then at the top, you'll see production release and you'll just need to select which operating system you're using. I'm using Windows, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and download it. Once you have that, you'll need to go through the installation process. Your computer may not recognize JMRI, so you may have to tell it that it's okay to install it. But overall, you'll just go through the installation process, and once that's done, we can get to programming. Okay, so now we can go ahead and open up JMRI from our start menu. It'll be under our programs, and we're gonna open up the program Decoder Pro. This is one of several programs that comes with JMRI, including Panel Pro and Sound Pro. There's also one called Operations Pro, and we're gonna need to set up a new railroad for this. So we're gonna go ahead, once it opens up this, I already have one set up, but we'll need to click New, and then we'll title our railroad, and then we'll need to set up its connection. Now, what we do when we set up its connection is that it actually has has the option for DCC++, which also works with DCC++ EX. So you'll go through a few menus and then you'll go ahead and when it says the type, you'll click DCC++, then you'll click DCC++ serial port, and then you're gonna go ahead and select your serial port, which as we know we've seen before is COM3, and then we're gonna click finish. And we now have our JMRI Decoder Pro panel up and you can see we can turn things on and off. Go ahead and switch that power button to on. You will see the LEDs that come on at the motor shield right there and then we can start programming. The first thing we'll do is click new locomotive. It'll bring up this window right here and we'll need to figure out what decoder is in our locomotive. So I'm going to select matched only and then click read type from decoder. This is going to read our decoder and figure out what kind of decoder it is from its database. And you can see it's matched with an ESU Locksound 5 Micro DCC Direct. It's also read that I have a long address programmed on this, a four character address with 8345. This is a locomotive I've already programmed, but I need to save it in here, so I'm gonna type uh, roster ID as NS8345 and click save right here. Now there's a lot you can do with your locomotive and programming it in JMRI. I'm not gonna show you how to do it, but I'm gonna show you how to access it. So down here in the bottom, you wanna make sure that a programming track is selected, and then you're gonna click the big programming button. Once you click that, it's going to open up the comprehensive programmer window for that locomotive, and you have all of your options. And this, this particular decoder has quite a few options that you can do. You can see right here, I'm reading the speed table that I'm using, and then I can also click write and write the speed table, which is what that little red line is doing. It's writing each individual CV for you. You can also adjust CVs manually and do all sorts of stuff. Now, when you do this and you write this, you're gonna see your locomotive maybe move and flash a little bit. This particular locomotive does not, but you can see that I brought in this Fox Valley Models locomotive and it does. Being able to take this programming track wherever it's needed is so handy and I absolutely love it. Now you guys may be wondering, why haven't I seen Jimmy's face? Well, I'm going to explain that in the end credits where I typically do my bloopers, but I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading. Hey everybody, this is why I am not on camera much this week. I'm doing a prescription skin treatment regimen from my dermatologist to heal up some stuff on my head. 
and uh, on my face, so uh, it doesn't look that great. PSA, visit a dermatologist because this is all from sun damage. So, but thank you guys so, so much for watching. Hopefully I'll be on camera by coffee and trains. Hopefully this heals up enough to where I can be more on camera, but thanks guys. See you next time.